Welcome back to the channel, guys. We have another episode of NCAA 06 Race for the Heisman. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe, guys. We are on the road to 1,000 subs. In today's episode, we are looking to get our focus back, guys. If you saw last episode, we absolutely got destroyed against the Missouri Tigers at home. Kyle Field is the number one hardest place to play in the nation, and we lost 48-14. to Too much partying. This week, we had a great week of practice and focus. Today's games are against Oklahoma State and Baylor, and both are away. Hi, everybody. Brad Nessler along with my partners, Kirk Herbstreet and Lee Corso. It's a picture-perfect day as we get set for today's contest between the Texas A&M Aggies and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. We've had some great games so far this season, and this one has all the makings to be another fantastic one. And here come the Cowboys. The Aggies seem to have the better team. They should win this game. What do you think, Kirk? Texas A&M has one of the better running attacks in college football and a very good running back. Lee, this will be a great opportunity here for fans to get a chance to see him run the football and lead his team to a victory. Okay, you ready for my pick? Texas A&M will be too much today. Oklahoma State won the coin toss, but they elected to receive, so we got the offense on the field first. Miller takes a direct snap, and he is off to the races. Luckily, our boy Birch is able to catch up to him and knock him out of bounds. Otherwise, that would have been a sure touchdown. A couple plays later, it is now third and three from the four-yard line. Miller takes the handoff, and he is going to go in for the touchdown, and the Oklahoma State Cowboys are up early 7 to nothing. In the very next series, Texas A&M on offense. We're looking to find Daniel Mock across the middle of the field. He has definitely grown the last couple games into a standout baller receiver. Right away, we're able to hit him for the easy touchdown, 67-yard strike. Take a look at that again, guys. Pontiac game-changing performance. He is literally tripled covered. Unfortunately, I'm not able to make the extra points, so we're actually still down. It is a 7-6 ball game. Hopefully, that doesn't come back to bite us. Oklahoma on their next offensive drive. They're looking to establish the run. Quarterback Garcia is going to hand it off to Miller. He ends up getting stuffed in the middle, trying to bounce it outside, fumbles the ball. Barnes is able to pick it up, runs down the sideline, able to make one guy miss, and then gets tackled. Great play by the Texas A&M Aggie defense. That is going to swing the momentum in our favor, and Jacobs, number 10, the middle linebacker, was the one who dislodged the ball. A&M comes out on offense. Finding Coleman in the flats, he's able to pick up the first down, and that is going to get us into the red zone. Very next play, shotgun McGee pulling out to the left, able to find Daniels for the easy score with the corner out, baby. Going for two because we got to get that extra point back. We are going to send the fullback out to the flats, get a nice little block right there, and Coleman is able to make it in with ease for the two-point conversion. It is now 14-7. With Oklahoma State coming back on offense, they are looking to have some short-term memory after that fumble resulted in eight points. Garcia looking to get something going, able to find Graham open, and then lightning strikes twice. Once again, Jacobs is able to force a fumble, and Williams picks it up. Just like last drive, A&M is in great territory. Let's check out that replay again. Graham catches it, and then straight away, man, Jacob just strips it out of his hands. With the a &M offense back on the field, we're looking to get Daniel Mock going again. Finds him wide open on the drag route. That's going to be a first down, and we are back in the red zone looking to score some more points. Very next play, we do a direct snap to Coleman, and he is going to go in the end zone untouched for the 12-yard score. That man right there is looking to get himself back in the Heisman race. After that touchdown by the a &M offense, Oklahoma really wasn't able to get anything going on offense. They were able to pick up a couple first downs, but obviously they didn't score any points. Here it is with seven seconds left to go in the half. We are just looking to get something here. We end up throwing a bomb to mock off the play action pass, and that is good for 68 yards. Guys, this game is getting out of hand, and it is just halftime. Once again, we're going to take a look at that. Daniel Mock just flat out running past the coverage. Able to score with ease, and we are going to go into the half, guys, 28-7. to That's right, guys. To start of the second half, we get the ball. McGee doing a little play action, able to find Daniels across the middle of the field for a first down. And shotgun McGee looking, going to his left a little bit, able to find Mock on that nice drag route once again for an easy completion, and we are now in Cowboy territory. McGee still liking the drop back. 
We're going to hit Davis right there. Sets up a easy third and two. And that's when we're going to hand the ball off to Coleman. We're just going to run this simple toss play all the way to the sideline where he's able to finally able to pick up the first down. Next play, direct snap. Coleman's got plenty of room to run. Able to make a defender miss. Gets all the way down to the five-yard line. First and goal, McGee looking. Finding Mock in triple coverage. Able to throw a dime into the zone. I honestly cannot believe we were able to complete this pass. Look at threading the needle right there, guys. Unbelievable throw by McGee for the touchdown. Now, with this game getting away from the Cowboys, they're going to need to do something on offense. Garcia is going to take matters into his own hands. With third and 15, he is able to pick up the first down on a scramble. That is one thing about these scrambling quarterbacks, guys. They can pick up yards anytime they want. Next play, they're able to hand it off to Miller, who's able to pick up another first down. And it looks like the Cowboys have something going here on this drive. Start of the fourth quarter. Handed it off to Miller again, able to break a couple tackles, gets another first down, and that's going to get him all the way down to the 34-yard line. Garcia finally going through the air. Barnes not able to come up with an interception or a deflection. Bryant makes the catch at the 4-yard line. I formation, they're actually going to give it to their fullback right here, Upshaw. Able to do a stiff arm and drag AM defenders into the end zone to get the game to 35-14. to AM. After recovering the onside kick, we're able to find Mock again on the drag route, bringing us down to the 12-yard line. Unfortunately, after that catch by Mock, we weren't able to set anything up. And once again, field goals. Man, I have got to really start practicing those. No good. Luckily, since the game is out of hand, I really don't need to worry too much about missing the field goal. Next drive, Garcia under pressure throws a pick to Johnson. Number two, he's able to take it in for the pick six, baby. That's just going to increase our lead to 42 to 14 with a minute 27 left to go in the game. And thank goodness this one finally comes to an end because I'd hate to see it get any uglier. Any final thoughts on this one, Coach? I can't say enough about this performance. Texas A&M looked like a team on a mission to destroy anything and everything that got in their way. Brad, this is a really good-looking football team. That concludes another game of NCAA Football 2006. Our final score, Texas A&M 42, Oklahoma State 14. Looking at individual stats, Daniel Mock, 7 catches, 209 yards, 3 touchdowns. Coleman, 3 for 19. Daniels, 2 for 24. And Davis, 1 for 9. If you look at rushing, Coleman did great there as well. 12 carries for 72 yards and a touchdown. McKee played phenomenal. 13 completions on 18 attempts, 261 yards, 4 touchdowns, no picks. Back in the dorm room, let's check out that fan mail. Dear Daniel, oh boy, the next game can't come fast enough. Each time I watch you play, I am more and more impressed. You are a Heisman winner in the making. Keep it up. We will all be cheering for you. All the best, Phil Boyer. Let's go ahead and check out that newsletter next. Uh-oh, the unusual suspect. Mock is the new number one after a 209 reception, three touchdown performance. Is that what I think it is? Let's go ahead and get to the computer. Check the Heisman watch. Yes, sir, baby. Your boy, Daniel Mock, number one on the list now. 46 receptions, 1,185 yards so far this season, guys. That is phenomenal. After that blowout win, guys, I've decided to go from All-American to Heisman, baby. Next game we're going up against is Baylor. We are currently ranked number 13th in the nation, guys. Let's go win this rivalry game. Greetings from EA Sports. I'm Brad Nessler, and alongside me are Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit. And we couldn't have asked for better weather for today's game between the Texas A&M Aggies and the Baylor Bears. The talking was heated between these two rival schools earlier this week, so we'll see some emotion immediately. And here come the Bears. The Aggies are a confident bunch of kids, and rightfully so. Kirk, this team is just too powerful. Texas A&M is led by their running back. Now, I had a chance to talk to him about this game, and believe me, he is ready to run all over this defense. Coach, I expect him to have a big game on the ground. I agree with you on this one. The Aggies are going to win this game. Now that 
So even though Baylor is 3-4 and four on the year, when you put it on Heisman mode, every single team is hard to beat. Miller's going to end up finding his wide receiver down the sideline for an easy first down to start this drive. On the very next play, Miller is able to hit his wide receiver. Actually, that is a running back. Foreman out of the backfield gets into a and territory. Luckily for us, we are able to get a couple stops, so Baylor has to kick a long field goal. That is still going to put him up 3 to nothing though. AM on offense facing a third and one. We are just looking to try to move the chains right here. Do not want to go three and out on our very first offensive series. Facing a third and 12, we are looking to go to our playmaker, Daniel Mock. Once again, he's running that drag across the middle of the field, able to connect it. It's just a perfect window where it's in between the linebackers and the free safety. Unfortunately, our drive stalls. We end up having to punt the ball. Baylor gets it back, looking to put some more points on the board. Going five wide, Miller. Just rushes his throw or whatnot and throws an interception to Johnson. That is his second interception in two games. Couldn't come at a more critical time. Hopefully we're able to get some points off that turnover. After a couple first downs by this AM offense, we are now inside the 10-yard line. McGee trying to be conservative. We're just going to hit Coleman, pick up that first down, get a new set of downs. First in goal from the four. Direct snap to Coleman. Needs to make one guy miss. He ends up breaking his tackle and he's in for the end zone. Texas A&M finally takes the lead with only a minute left to go in the half. Well, guys, you already know what's going to happen. If I can't make an extra point on All-American, what makes you think I can make an extra point on Heisman? So with only 23 seconds left to go in the half, Baylor's already ran the ball on first down. Didn't pick up any yards. You would think that they would just keep running the ball or let this clock wind down. They end up doing a play action, and Miller throws a pick. Johnson straight up just reads it and gets in front of it for the pick six, baby. Extending Texas A&M's lead right before halftime, and that, my friends, is a game-changing performance by Pontiac. And yes, you guessed it, just like last week, guys, I'm going to be trying to get the two-point conversion, putting the fullback out into the flats, and once again, we go in untouched with Coleman. Now, with only four seconds left to go, Miller should just take a knee, but instead, he decides to throw it again and gets another pick by Johnson, second one of the game. This dude has literally had two picks in like 26 seconds of work. Midway through the third quarter, Texas A&M backed up after a Baylor punt. We're looking to just get some yards right here. This play has been very effective on our two-point conversions. Unfortunately, it is not when we're backed up on our own end zone. That is going to be a safety for the Baylor Bears, making the score 14-5. to Luckily, our defense is able to hold the Baylor Bears to a three and out, forcing them to punt, which gives A&M the ball back. First play, we're just going to do a play-action pass. McGee. Throws it to Mock, who is wide open. I do not even know how you get that open, especially somebody as good as Mock. Somebody should be on him all the time, if not double teamed. He ends up scoring a huge 80-yard touchdown, which really puts the game out of reach. I mean, you're talking about right here, it is 20-5, about to be 21-5 to after the extra point, and that is another game-changing Pontiac performance. With 29 seconds left to go in the third quarter. AM looking to punt the ball right here. Trying to play the field game, you know. With the uh, third quarter winding down, we're just going to make Baylor have to go the whole entire end of the field if they want to score some points. We kick it deep to Fulmore, and he literally just goes all the way down the sideline untouched. Morris had a chance right there, but missed. And, wow, Baylor is back in the game off special teams. It is 21 to 21-12 now. Need to get momentum back on our side to start the fourth quarter. We are going deep right here. McGee drops back, sets his feet, finds a wide open Daniels who makes the catch but is out of bounds. Later in the drive, fourth and one. We're looking to put this game away. Coleman gets the ball, tries to bounce to the outside. Looks like we have the first down, but the CPU ends up not giving it to us, which puts Baylor in great field position, and Miller is able to find Ford across the middle, getting him down to the 25. Couple plays later, Miller finds Givens, getting them all the way down inside the 10. I formation, Foreman finds some room and is able to score a touchdown. Cutting into our lead, guys. This has now become a very close game here in the fourth quarter. AM holding on to a two point lead. We've actually got a couple first downs. Trying to run the clock out right here, guys. Just giving the ball to Coleman. Thinking if we pick up this first down, the game is over. Ends up fumbling it, and Baylor picks it up, running all the way down the sideline. 
for the touchdown and that is going to give them the lead with only a minute and three seconds left to go in the game guys. Baylor would end up going for two and getting it making it a six point difference. Even though we're down by six, we're still in a good place right here because we have all three timeouts. We end up doing a play-action pass, finding Daniel Mock wide open again. There's got to be something with the play-action pass that is forcing this coverage to come down and then Daniel Mark just running over the top of him because this is the second time we have run this play and it's the exact same result. Play-action pass freezes the coverage and Mock just runs right past him. Now for the moment of truth, guys. With the tie ball game, I am trying to kick an extra point, and you already know how bad I am at kicking field goals. But here we go. I lowered the arrow all the way down, basically just kicking a line drive, and luckily for me, it goes through the uprights, giving us the lead with 45 seconds left to play. With only four seconds left to play, being fourth and 18, Miller has one last chance to be a hero. Texas A&M defense comes through, end up getting the sack, and that is the ball game, guys. Great victory for the Texas A&M Aggies. We win the game 28-27. It's a done deal here as the final whistle blows. Any final thoughts on this one, Coach? This is why I'm up here with you guys. Coaching a game like this might give you a heart attack. Texas A&M really got all they asked for and more in this contest. Great job by both teams. Well, that'll wrap up another chapter in NCAA football 2006. And our final count, Texas A&M 28, Baylor 27. This is Brad Nessler for Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit saying so long. Checking out the receiving stats, Daniel Mock, seven catches, 262 yards, two touchdowns, 80 yard long. Coleman, three of seven, Daniels, one for seven. Rushing, Coleman was 13 for 13, and then passing, McGee was 11 for 21. 267 yards, two touchdowns. And once again, no picks. Take a look at that fan mail after that win. Yo, Daniel, way to step up and make yourself a force on the team. The way you are playing now is the foundation on which Heisman Trophy winners are built. Keep building on that momentum later, Jacob Howard. After that win, let's also check out the newsletter. No love lost. The Bears lose a heartbreaker to rival Texas A&M in Waco. Last thing we're going to do with this episode, guys, is see our opponents next episode. We have got a couple of good opponents. We're going to be playing Oklahoma and Nebraska. Both games will be at home, but both are ranked opponents. Number 18, Oklahoma is 4-3, and three, and number 5, Nebraska is 8-1. and one. Should be another great episode, as usual, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe. I'm the coach, and I'm out.